हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल क्वालिटी मैग्निफाई इंडिया माई सर दीपक कुमार सामल वेलकम ऑल द सब्सक्राइबर एंड व्यूअर्स टू माय चैनल होप यू आर वाचिंग ऑल द एपी एच सिक्स फिफ्टी थ्री वीडियोज अपार्ट फ्रॉम ए पी एच सिक्स फिफ्टी थ्री आई हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड ए सीरीज ऑफ ए पी एंड फाइव सेवेंटी इफ यू आर प्रिपेरिंग योर सेल्फ फॉर ए पी then you can watch those videos and make note of that i strongly believe watching those videos will help you to make your examination smooth to pass it will help you in many aspects because i have highlighted the points i have choose because if you go for the code it consist of uh, several pages so i choose those particular pages which are important and they came in the question and further highlighted those and discussed further so that if you will watch those videos and make note of that and further practice with uh, those videos again and again then it will be easier for you to understand the things ap courses is not for achieving the certificate or to get a certificate the basic concept is to understand the thing properly if you are going for api 570 piping or 510 pressure vessel or 653 tank or 580 rbi or 571 damage mechanism or 577 651 652 whatever the api courses are there the main concept behind that <coughs> the main concept behind that that you should know you should understand you should able to know the concept behind uh, uh, the api code which was generated by api american petroleum institute to know the things properly correctly if you will get it understand properly then you can use it in real life then you can get some value addition then you can do some value addition for the construction phases for the inspection phases for the in service inspection phases so that is the main motto yes of course we need a certificate but at the same time we need some real knowledge also so i have already covered ap653 uh, uh, up to part 8 up to part 8 all 650 and the remaining of 653 is already covered this is the last part for ap653 course after that 650 and 653 will be completed and the rest of the course will cover in further parts we will do some question answer discussions and everything and we will cover 571 651 652 sm section 9 section 5 577 so those courses we will discuss in further parts but as i told you this part 9 is the last part for ap653 where we will cover chapter 10 11 12 and few annexes out of this chapter 10 11 and 12 chapter 12 is most important which is testing and inspection but as i cover in this part 9 10 11 and 12 and some few annexes you can expect almost 10 to 15 questions so let's start with section 10 dismantling and reconstruction as you know ap653 covers repair alternation re-rating okay reconstruction and relocation okay so for reconstruction and relocation we have to do dismantling and reconstruction okay we have to dismantle okay if a tank we are need to shift it from one place to another place then we have to dismantle it how we have to dismantle it how we have to cut the pieces what the marking we have to do already with those things we will read in uh, this part okay so for dismantling and reconstruction all construction work must be authorized by authorized inspector or an engineer this is the same word we are um, repeating again and again last chapter also we discussed if any repair will be done who will give the authorization now authorized inspector or engineer okay then the procedures the method statements the itp should be approved by this guys okay 
if you want to do any page plate, uh, replacement if you want to do any welder qualification or anything you need to take the prior uh, prior permission from the authorized instructor or engineer why i am repeating all these things because this is coming in the questions okay usually this is a closed book questions similarly last chapter what we uh, what we taught the whole points need uh, uh, need to be the authorized inspector will designate the whole points. So, whole points will be designated by the authorized inspector only. Okay. Whole points means the work cannot progress without the presence of the authorized inspector. The authorized inspectors will be there. Then only the work can be progressed. The authorized inspector or an engineer experienced in storage tank design shall approve all reconstruction work at the designated hold points and other reconstruction has been completed in accordance with the requirement of the standard. Cleaning and gas spring. The tank shall be cleaned and gas spread prior to commencement of dismantling. Whenever you are going for a dismantling, this is a safety aspect. You have to make it gas spread and uh, cleaned it properly. Okay. There is maybe some... Uh, flammable gas or there is some hazardous gas so during dismantling if you will not remove those might be there is a safety so can happen okay so dismantling methods we start from the bottom okay how bottom bottom plates that will be reused shall be cut by dismantling the lap welds or by cutting along with the remaining weld at a minimum two inch away from the existing weld except where cuts uh, cross existing seamers so what is telling for the bottom plates Whenever do we, we are doing a uh, uh, dismantling and construction, we have to cut the plate, the bottom plate, cell plate, roof plate, you have to cut. You cannot transfer in a one piece because it is too big. If it is not possible in one piece to transfer, then you have to cut it in pieces and do it again, um, well, uh, uh, ship, uh, ship it to another place and then you have to reconstruct that area. So for bottom plates, what is saying minimum two inch away from the existing plate. Whenever you are cutting any bottom plate, because bottom plates are usually lap welders, you have to cut those minimum two inch away. If the bottom plate to be used, one of the following method to be accepted. The bottom plate may be cut from the cell along the line shown in 10.1, scrapping the welds and the bottom plate directly attached to the cell. If the entire bottom plate is reused, the bottom plate may be okay. I will tell you the gist. What is telling? This is our cell plate. This is our bottom plate. As we know, the critical length is 3 inch away. Okay. If I am going to dismantle this one and I want to send a, and, and want to cut the bottom plate, at that time, what I have to do? I have to cut from here. I, I don't want to cut from here. It is not allowed. I have to cut uh, at least 3 inch away. From the cell plate and I want to keep this person. I don't want to disturb the critical zone area. That's what it is saying. So tank cell plate may be dismantled using one of the following method or a combination of uh, thereof. The, any cell ring that is uh, that may be dismantled by cutting out existing weld seam and the heat affected zone of the weld. For the purpose heat affected zone, what we told four times the thickness area okay that is called heat affected zone area for the purpose of this method the minimum heat affected zone to be removed is half half of the weld metal with uh, width or one fourth inch whichever less on both side of the weld seams so here what is selling telling all cell rings may be dismantled by cutting out the existing weld seams. whatever the cell plates are there okay you cannot you have to um, you cannot cut in the uh, existing uh, weld or heat affected zone and for heat affected zone the minimum heat affected zone to be removed will be half half of the weld metal width whatever the weld metal width this is let's say this this is weld metal area okay whatever its width is okay half of the width or one fourth inch whichever is less whichever is less you have to consider it as the uh, heat affected area and you have to cut it and remove it okay heat affected area usually the hardness is higher if it is not pwst any cell ring half inch thick or thinner may be dismantled by cutting through the weld without removing the hz okay if it is more than half inch thick okay um, or thinner then we have to we can uh, use the heat affected zone area without uh, removing the uh, half of the world metal or one four inch uh, formula. Okay. 
तो सेल रिंग्स में भी डिसमेंटल बाय कटिंग वर्टिकल एंड और हॉरिजॉन्टल कट्स थ्रू द सेल मिनिमम 6 इंच अवे फ्रॉम द एग्जिस्टिंग वर्ल्ड्स वायर अबाउट द एग्जिस्टिंग वर्ल्ड इज देयर सो इट्स एग्जिस्टिंग वर्ल्ड 6 इंच अवे वी हैव टू कट इट सो लेट्स से दिस इज अ सेल प्लेट एंड आई हैव टू रिमूव द सेल प्लेट सो आई कैन कट फ्रॉम हियर एंड फ्रॉम हियर 6 इंच अवे and the distance should be 6 inch away then i have to shift the plate and reweld in other place roofs roof plates shall be cut by deseaming of lap welds you can deseam the lap welds and you can uh, remove the roof plates or by cutting along side of the remaining weld at a minimum 2 inch away from the existing welds these are some of the key terms they ask usually in the open book questions okay usually it is not uh, so important okay piece marking piece marking is important one usually it come in the exam cell but it is a close book exam piece marking cell bottom and roof plates shall be marked prior to dismantling the uh, for ready identification and placement when the tank is constructed marking material shall be a durable type whatever the marking material you will use that should be durable neither it will evaporate or it will um, uh, disappear then it is very difficult to find out what is the marking which plate uh, at which location it is difficult so drawing showing piece mark location are also uh, useful adjacent a minimum of two sets this is important usually it come in the close book questions a minimum of two set of matching center punch marks shall be located on the top and bottom edge of each cell plate to facilitate proper alignment during the reconstruction welding this table is a close book open book question you will get this question there is two things one is reinforcement for the visual inspection okay and one is reinforcement for the radiography so don't confuse both for radiography whatever the reinforcement that is a, that requirement and visual inspection requirement is different so whenever there is a open book question find the minimum reinforcement thickness in vertical joint let's say it's a if it is less than plate thickness less than half inch what is the minimum vertical uh, joint uh, reinforcement okay for half inch so it is 330 3 by 32 but don't confuse it with the visual ins visual inspection requirements are different and here um, for radiography the requirements are different okay so welding provision shall be made during the reconstruction of tank to ensure that weld spacing requirements of figure 9.1 are maintained okay new vertical joints in adjacent cell cores made in accordance to 10.3.3 shall not be at time okay each other minimum distance of 50 what is the okay so this is the minimum difference this is a close book question okay it it was asked i don't remember maybe last or last to last exam okay what is the minimum offset minimum offset is the minimum distance of 5t what t is the th plate thickness of thicker cores of the point of the offset okay offset should be minimum distance of 5t for welding you have to remember it it is a close book so no welding of any kind shall be performed when the surface of the part to be welded are wet this is a close book again wet from rain snow or ice when rain or snow is falling on such surface or during period of high wind unless the welder and the work is properly sealed no welding of any kind shall be performed when the temperature of the base metal is less than 0 degree f so this is close book less than 0 degree f no welding is permitted when the temperature of the base metal is between 0 degree f to 32 degree f or the thickness is in excess of 1 inch the base metal within 3 inch of the place where welding is to be started shall be heated to a temperature warm to the hand before welding this is again a close book if the base metal temperature is 0 to 32 or the thickness Uh, is excess of 1 inch then we have to heat mi minimum preheat 3 inch both the side of the weld both the side of the weld 3 inch both the side to warm hands okay this is for removing of the moisture so each layer of weld metal this is a close book you have to remember huh? this what is the requirement below 0 degree f no welding is allowed if it is 0 degree f to 32 degree f and the thickness is exceed of 1 inch then we have to do both side the weld 3 inch up to a hand warm okay we cannot start it as it is the reinforcement of new weld 
on all board joint on each side of the plate shall not exceed the thickness shown in table 1.1 as i told minimum thickness of the new weld this is the requirement reinforcement thickness reinforcement thickness you understand this let's say this is a v and we do the weldings okay we put the weld layers so the height from here to the top this distance is called reinforcement okay this is called reinforcement so if the plate thickness is less than half inch the vertical joint if the joint is in vertical the reinforcement should be 332 if the joint is in horizontal then the reinforcement should be 1 by 8 inch okay this is called reinforcement this is called toe okay this is weld joint toe Tack welds used in assembly of vertical joint to tank cell shall be removed and shall not be remain in the finished joint when the joint are welded manually. This is a closed book question. When such joints are welded by a submerged arc process, the tack welds shall be thoroughly cleaned of all welding slag but, not, but need not to be removed provided that they are sound and are thoroughly fused into the subsequently applied weld bits. Okay? Tack weld to be left in place. Uh, shall be made by the qualified welders. This is a close book question. Tack welds to be done by qualified welders only. Non-qualified welders cannot do tack welds. If weldable primer coating have been applied on surface to be welded, they shall be included in welding procedure specific qualification test for the brand, formulation and maximum thickness of the primer applied. What happen usually? Whenever the plates, cell plates are coming, the edge preparation of some of the cell plates are already done. So for the edge preparation, once the edge preparation is done, to preserve those edges, we put one weldable primer. Okay, We put a weldable primer. This weldable primer, when you do the cell to cell welding, let's say this is a cell and there is another one cell and you have to do cell to cell welding, no need to remove that weldable primer. No need. Okay. You can directly weld with the weldable primer. So for that weldable primer, if you are using any weldable primer, for that you need to put it in the procedure, procedure qualification test when you do PQR, okay, procedure qualification test. At that time you mention what type of weldable primer you are using. It's brand, formulation and maximum thickness of primer applied. What is the DFT of that primer? So based on that, you make your PQR ready and so that when you are doing the final production holding, it will not impact. Okay. This is a closed book question usually they ask. Low hydrogen electrode shall be used for manual metal arc welding. Okay. Always low hydrogen electrode. 7018, 7016. Okay. For all welding cell cores over half inch thick APA650 group 2, it is applicable to which over where? Low hydrogen electrode is applicable to this, this table. Okay, All weld for cell cores half inch thick. If the cell cores is half inch thick, then group 1 to 3 metal. If you remember, I already told you group 1 to 6 metals. There is no P number grouping in APA 650. If you remember, I already taught you. There is group 1 to 6. And group 1 to 3 they consider as low grade. And group 4 to 6 they consider it as high grade. So, if the cell thickness is more than half inch and it is falling on group 1, 2, 3, then we need to do, we need to use low hydrogen electrode. And for all weld cell cores from group 4 to 6, okay, as I told, group 4 to 6 are high grades. And for all weld of cell cores for which a PA group of material cannot be reasonably certain in section 11.1.2, we have to use low hydrogen. If this two you remember, okay, low hydrogen electrode requirement. Half inch is the key word to remember. Low hydrogen electrode shall be used for welding temporary and a new permanent attachment to cell of APA 650 group 4, 4A, 5 and 6 high grade materials or when the APA group of material cannot be reasonably ascertained in 11.1.2. Okay, but templates. The welding of the cell to bottom shall be completed prior to welding of the bottom joints. That I already told you many times. 
in a page 650 also when we read it we uh, we learn this one let's say this is the bottom plate okay there are bottom plates are there so what is saying before doing this welding first you have to weld the circumferential weld with the cell plate cell plate welding with the bottom plate first completed then you go for these weldings okay that's what it is saying bottom plate cells plate to be joined by butt welding shall be meshed accurately and retain in position during welding misalignment of completed vertical joint over 5 8 inch thing shall not exceed 10 percent of the plate thickness this is open book most important if the vertical joint thickness is more than 5 8 inch then the misalignment shall not exceed 10 percent okay you have to remember like 10 percent 20 percent you have to easily remember 10 percent for vertical 20 percent for horizontal so it is easy to remember okay so 10 percent 5 18 inch 10 percent with a maximum of 1 8 inch misalignment in joint 5 8 inch thick or less shall not exceed 1 16 inch in vertical joint so there is two things 5 18 inch thick okay over 5 18 inch shall not exceed 10 percent 1 18 inch to 5 18 inch shall not exceed 1 16 inch so this is for vertical joint similarly horizontal joints horizontal joints the lower part of any point shall not be more than 20 percent there what was there it was 10 percent here it is 20 percent okay with a maximum projection of 180 inch except that the projection of 116 inch is acceptable upper plate 516 inch. so the key is 516 here it is 58 inch okay here it is 516 inch so if it is thick more than 5 8 inch for vertical that you have to remember okay it is an open book don't worry it is an open book you should know where it is okay then 10 percent of the plate thickness okay and 1 8 to 5 8 inch for vertical it is 1 16 inch similarly for horizontal it is 20 percent if the thickness is more than 5 16 inch okay for horizontal and vertical joint tank cell course constructed of material over one and a half inch okay thick uh, of the thicker plate multi pass weld procedures are required if the thickness is more than one and a half inch then it is a must you have to use multi pass weld procedures with no pass more than three fourth inch is permitted a minimum preheat of 200 degree Fahrenheit is required this is the closed book if the thickness is more than one and a half inch then multi pass is always recommended and each pass should not exceed three four inch okay three fourth inch means 18 mm okay so above 18 mm you cannot do the deposition should be less than that and minimum preheating should be 200 degree fahrenheit that is the requirement okay so this is for the uh, <coughs> uh, for the cells and here uh, it's selling uh, it is telling what is the uh, preheat requirement is required and uh, how what is the pass uh, how, what is the how many multi pass you have to use and for multi pass what is the thickness permitted for each pass that is that um, they have mentioned there okay so that you have to remember one question must will come from the cell plumbness it is again a sure shot question okay plumbness if you remember 650 what i say 1 is to 200 okay but in 653 it is 1 is to 100 easy to remember okay there it is 1 is to 200 here it is 1 is to 100 so what is the plumbness the maximum outer plumbness of the top of the cell relative to the bottom of the cell shall not exceed 1 is to 100 of the tank bottom tank height with the maximum of 5 inch maximum is 5 inch and the ratio is 1 by 100 okay the 1 is 200 criteria with a maximum of 5 inch shall also apply to fixed uh, columns <coughs> for tanks with internal floating groups apply the criteria for section 650 section 752 okay so this is the plumbness uh, requirements plumbness what we uh, understand it is 1 is 200 or 5 inch okay then roundness tank roundness how to check the tank roundness here the tank this table a must question will come 
they will give you the 10 diameter and they will find they will tell you what is the tolerance for the radius toler uh, radius tolerance uh, in inches okay if it is less than 40 inch it is plus minus half inch 40 to 140 well, less than 40 feet it is plus minus half inch 40 feet uh, greater and less than 150 it is plus minus 3 4 150 to 250 it is plus minus 1 and greater than 250 feet diameter it is plus minus 1 and quarter inch okay this is the roundness roundness means if the tank is like that so i have to check the periphery all around the periphery okay and if in design it is saying <coughs> something <coughs> if in design it is saying something the, the roundness must be this much then according to this tank diameter the tolerance should follow as per this table <coughs> sorry <coughs> Picking, picking bending. If you remember, I will make it simple. For picking bending in a PSX50, we we came to know it is one inch and one inch. But here, picking and bending for 653, it is half inch, and for bending, it is one inch. So this whole topic will cover this one. Okay, and there is a uh, requirement for concrete ring walls. This is a this this one is important. This usually come in the open book question, sometime in closed book also, okay. Ring wall, what is the tolerance within one or plus minus 180 inch of any 30 foot of the circumference and plus minus um, half, one and a half, yeah, plus minus 180 inch if any 10 foot of, uh, of circumference and half inch for the total circumference. This is a requirement for the uh, tank foundations, okay. This is usually come in the open books. But picking and bending, you can remember half inch and one inch. But for APA 650, it is one inch and one inch. Okay, that you need to remember. Welding qualification. So welding qualification, there is a question usually come because the welder qualification, welder qualification and welder welding operator shall be qualified in. There is three things you need to remember. Okay, a closed book question will come for the welding qualifications. It should be in accordance to ASME section 9 of ASME code plus the additional requirement of APA 650 section 9 and this standard. So whenever they say welder qualification of APA 653 to be done by whose, whose, by whose parties, by whose procedures. So the first procedure is ASME section 9 of ASME code and then additional requirement of APA 650 section 9 and this standard APA 653. So these three standards we have to combine to get the welder qualification. This is closed book questions. Okay. Identification and record. You will get one question from identification and record. <coughs> The contractor shall assign each welder and welding operator an identifying number, letter or symbol. This is must. Okay. Record of this identification along with uh, the date and result of welder qualification test shall be accessible to the inspector uh, and or owner operator. Okay. This is a closed book question. The welder or welding operator identification marks shall be stamped either by hand or machine on all tank. That matter. The marks shall be adjacent to and at an interval not more than 1 meter or 3 feet along the following weld. This is important. Preheat or control deposition welding method as alternative to PWST. Usually, uh, control deposition welding method is more important in pressure vessels. There is a chapter and many questions come from that, APA 510. But here, there are similar. Um, Clause are there where we can avoid uh, the PWST if we do a controlled deposition welding or a proper pre-heating. Okay, it is not so important. Pre-heating method for impact testing not required. There are some terms, but don't be uh, get confused because it is a little bit confusing here. And here the number D is important. The weld area shall be preheated and maintained at a minimum temperature of 150 degrees centigrade. Here it is that, uh, writing preheating method, impact testing not required. If you maintain this preheating, then impact testing you can avoid. Okay. So what is the requirement? Minimum temperature 150 degrees C. During welding, the 150 degrees C temperature shall be checked 
to assure that 4 inch of the material or 4 times the material thickness which ever is greater on each side of the groove is maintained as i told you hz area okay heat affected zone area so it's telling four times of the uh, metal thickness or four, 4 inch 4 inch 100 mm or four times the metal thickness which ever is greater that area should be heated and the weld area should be heated how much 150 degrees c okay to maintain the minimum temperature the maximum interpass temperature shall be shall not exceed 3 15 degrees centigrade interpass means every pass after welding you have to check the next pass this pass welding is finished when you are going for the for the next pass welding you have to check what is the temperature of the first pass and that should not exceed 315 degrees centigrade for that purpose we can avoid impact testing okay so this is called preheating method this is not so important so sec section 12 as i told you section 12 examination and testing you will find few questions okay in um, ap653 chapter 9 is important and chapter 12 is next important to chapter 9 okay so nde what are the nde we have to do we have to do as per ap650 section 8 so cell penetrations for cell penetrations what are the nde usually uh, we have to uh, continue ultrasonic examination of cell plate for lamination shall be made in the uh, immediate area affected when adding a reinforcing plate of an existing re uh, on reinforced preparations and adding a hot tap connections if you are doing to this to these two things for the cell then it is must to do a ultrasonic examinations examination of repair weld defects these are some of the references it is showing completed weld repair or bot weld shall be examined over their full length by radiography or ultrasonic examinations if there is any repair weld then we have to do it by uh, radiography or ultrasonic uh, weld methods okay so we'll move to cell to bottom welds new welding of the cell to bottom joint shall be examined for its entire length by using a right angle vacuum box or solution films or by applying uh, light diesel oils all vacuum box text uh, testings uh, gas testings already we did in fa650 so those are the same uh, requirements whatever shown in fa650 the same requirement in fa653 it, it's only a repetition of all those testings okay for bottom up upon completion of the welding on tank, tank bottom the plate of the entire length of the new weld or tank bottom plates shall be examined visually or any potential defect and uh, leaks cell plate cell plate repair by weld metal deposit area of cell plate to be repaired by weld met, uh, welding shall be examined visually in addition cell plate area repaired by welding shall be examined by a magnetic particle inspection cell plate repaired by weldings it should be done by visually and by mpi or lpt liquid penetration testing if there is any floating roof then the performance of visual examinations from the top and bottom side of the floating roof can be done okay repair of air leaks vacuum box penetrating oil pressure gas or any other applicable non non destructive testing to be done for the floating roofs radiograph as i told you how we have to do in ap650 already we read it what are the radiography requirements okay for vertical and horizontal joints similarly for 653 the requirements are different and you will get one question from here okay so for vertical joints what is saying new replacement cell plate to existing cell plate one additional radiograph shall be taken at each joint if there is any replacement of cell plate to the existing cell plate then we have to do one additional radiograph okay repaired joint in existing cell plate shall have one additional radiograph taken in each joints if there is a replaced joint in the existing cell plate then we have to do again one more joints okay for horizontal joints new replacement cell plates to existing cell plates one additional radiograph for each 50 ft this is the term you have to remember for horizontal for vertical only one one okay if this is the cell plate and i have to re remove one cell plate and put another one cell plate then vertically i have to take one more okay but for horizontal every ft every 50 ft okay repaired joint in existing cell plate shall have one additional radiograph taken for each 50 ft of repaired horizontal weld 
for intersection of horizontal and vertical this is very important okay where there is a intersection new replacement cell plate of new cells no additional radiograph is required other than those required by new replacement cell plate to existing cell plate each intersection shall be radiographed this is the cell plate so here the cells are welded so this is the intersection okay all this intersection areas where we are replacing the cell plate we need one radiograph okay for reconstructed tank each butt welded annular plate joint shall be radiographed in accordance to 5 650 section 8129 For reconstructed tank, each butt weld of annular plate. Butt weld annular plate. What I told, if this is the bottom plate, the ring is here, annular ring. On top of which the cell plate is there. Okay, this is the cell plate. So annular plate are joined by butt welded. Always by butt welded. Okay. Annular ring. We call it annular ring. So those annular rings will be repaired. Then those annular rings to be radiographed. Okay. For reconstruction tank radiograph examination is required 25% of the all junctions of the new weld over existing seams wherever there is a junction of new welds with the existing seams at that area we need at least 25% okay for square and rectangular replacement plates at least one radiograph shall be taken in vertical joints this is important you have to remember at least one for square and rectangular joints and at least one in horizontal joints and one in each corner when the square and rectangular replacement plate is located in the cell plate with thickness exceeding 1 inch the vertical joints shall be fully radiographed close book questions if the thickness is more than 1 then the vertical joint is fully radiographed the minimum diagnostic diagnostic length of each radiograph shall be 6 inch close book minimum is 6 inch per radiographic diagnosis okay for penetration installed using insert plate or thickened insert plate as described in 996 the completed butt weld between the insert plate or thickened insert plate of the adjoining cell plate shall be fully radiographed if there is thickened insert plate then a fully radiograph to be considered marking you will get one question usually this question they asked okay radiograph and radiograph records of all repair welds shall be marked with the letter r okay this usually every time in the question they asked okay hydro testing when hydro testing is required i hydro test uh, static test shall be performed on the following a reconstructed tank if are doing a reconstruction uh, if a major alteration or major repair usually we did it at the beginning for major repair or major reconstruction a hydro test is mandatory it is required okay hydrostatic test procedure the liquid level shall be held for a minimum of 24 hour we know that one as you remember how we do the hydro test we do in six steps okay first step when the tank is empty second stage when we put 25% water third step when we put 50% fourth step when we put 75% fifth stage when it is 100% and sixth step when it is empty and this fill fully filled okay this is 100% so when this is 100% we have to keep it for 24 hour okay then we have to drain the water and on the six steps when it is completely empty we do the settlement check okay so this is the procedure it is as per as pa 650 and 650 is saying we can avoid 2 3 4 step if we want so this is empty 25 50 75 100 then again empty and the duration between 5 and 6 is 24 hours so that's what it is saying here hydrostatic test procedure hydrostatic testing exceptions okay a fully hydrostatic test of tank is not required for major repair and major applications uh, is satisfied plus either of the following appropriate part this is not so required okay that depends upon the owner and operator decisions okay they can choose whether they are going to do any hydro test or not so this is bottom plate within the critical zone bottom plate repair as i told it is very important you will find it the bottom plate uh, 
how we'll do in the repair zone next slide we'll see this one okay cell to bottom weld repair repair of the weld attaching the cell to the annular ring or the cell to the bottom plate cell meet one of the following requirement a portion of the weld may be removed and replaced as long as the replaced weld meet the size of the required 650 and the person replaced does not represent more than 50 percent of the required weld cross-sectional area this is not so important the weld on the one side of the cell may be completely removed and replaced for a length not exceeding 12 inch cell to bottom weld repair replacing more than 50 percent of the required cross-sectional area cell not be closer than 12 inch of each others including repair of the opposite side of the welds this is not so important so repair of alternating mode of floating roofs no head per, per roofs as i told hydro test is not required okay for the roofs if you are doing any repair then hydro test hydro test only required when there is a major alternation or major repair okay? alternation or repair is there then we have to do um, hydro test so this is important bottom repair or replacement outside the critical zone no outside is okay inside the critical zone you have to be take uh, very careful person of new bottoms in tanks may be replaced without a hydro test when the subgrade under the new plate is found to be in, in condition acceptable to the authorized inspector or is restored to such condition and either the following conditions are met settlement survey after hydro test this is an important part which you have to do okay when settlement survey is required settlement survey is very important for a tank okay depends upon the settlement survey we will uh, finalize whether we will put the tank in service or not a settlement survey shall be conducted for all existing tanks that undergo a hydrostatic test except for tanks that have document service history or acceptable settlement values and no settlement is anticipated or occur during the hydro test if any tank has previous history that it was not settled then we can skip it but for the tank which a major alternation or major um, repair was done we have to do the hydro test and check the settlement so initial settlement survey when using if oh okay initial settlement survey how we do it as i explained to you the formula is very easy formula okay if it is the diameter is d okay we have to make it d by 10 okay and it should not the value should not be less than 8 it should be minimum 8 let's say the diameter is 60 then the minimum 60 divided by 10 is 6 but we have to take minimum 8 locations if the diameter is 100 then 100 by 10 is 10 so i have to take 10 locations and those locations are diagonal usually I have to take the locations like that okay I have to take the locations like that so and the minimum difference minimum distance of two locations should be 32 feet if you remember this one you will able to um, answer minimum two questions two questions will come for the settlement okay so here the minimum number of elevation points should be d by 10 d is the diameter of the, uh, in feet and there is another one formula 32 feet formula what is 32 formula if the diameter is like that and i have to take the locations like that so this is my um, uh, settlement reading so this is another one settlement reading so from this settlement reading to this settlement reading the minimum should be 32 feet okay so that the maximum spacing between settlement uh, will be 32 feet not minimum maximum should be 32 feet okay i cannot go beyond 32 33 34 i cannot go i did a uh, I, I am repeating again so first whatever the diameter you have to go for d by 10 okay then find how many locations and after finding the locations find what is the maximum distance and the maximum should go 32 feet okay so when settlement survey is required in accordance to 12.5.1 tank settlements shall be measured during filling and when the test water reaches 100 percent of the level we have to check it and usually it checked when the tank is filled with 100 percent leave it for 24 hour and after you make it empty and take the uh, settlement reading okay then we can find out what which type of settlement is happens this is another one important questions for marking and record clippings for mark, marking and record clippings, the letter and numbers should not less than 5 by 32 inch in high cell as, uh, as embroached and engraved or stamped on the plate to indicate uh, information as follows. 
so the name plates shall be made in corrosion resistance metal uh, embossed and engraved and stamped with letter and number not less than 4 mm or 5 by 32 inch high okay this is an important question usually come in close book radiograph radiograph shall be written for at least one year all radiograph reports so tank bottom settlements how will do it we'll read in the next slides there is two figures these two figure you have to remember okay one for the circumference another one diagonally how many points this is for external this is for internal external as i told you diameter by 10 but must be more than 8 and the maximum distance between two point is 32 feet but for here when we check the internal the maximum spacing is 10 feet okay and we have to make at least four equally spaced diameter measurements so if we take this measurements then you have to make at least four 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and the distance between uh, uh, two so maximum spacing is 10 feet okay so this is for internal this is for external again i am telling it is very important you have to remember it external when we are taking the settlement readings it is d by 10 and d by 10 when you say the minimum reading is 8 if it is 60 feet the diameter then 60 by 10 is called 6 but we cannot take, take six readings we have to take at least eight readings and the maximum spacing between two reading is 32 feet external measurement of cell uh, settlement external measurement of cell uh, bottom settlement internal how we have to make diagonal marking and equally space four markings we have to do it okay minimum equally space okay at least four and the distance between two is 10 feet okay and that is the maximum okay then we have to take the reading so this is the internal bottom and this is the external cell it is very important you will find definitely two to three questions edge settlement as i told you there is a term we read it break even point one question for this table must in the next slide we will read this table okay and one question from this table very easy to find and you will get one one answer from this one okay break even point if you remember I already uh, taught you at the beginning of 653. Break even point means the point from where the settlement occurs. Okay, the bottom settlement occurs. It is called break even points. So break even points there is two terms. Why? How much the settlement happens? We call it B. Okay, and R. R is the radius with uh, radius with the width of the settlement area. Okay, R is the radius width of the settlement area. The distance is given here, and B is the settlement. how much settlement it happen next slide there is a table this table b and r table this table you have to refer very easy to find out find the b r radius of uh, settlement area how much and b what is the maximum allowable settlement in inches you find it and uh, check on the graph and find out r was given how much is b or b was given how much is r okay by this simple calculation you can find out one question open book 100% in ap653 so that's all friends and by this we complete ap653 completely whatever the questions i have highlighted during all this ap653 i am pretty confident you will get if you check one by one you will get more than 85 to 90% questions which is enough to pass the exam so no need to worry watch the videos again and again make note of that practice it because there are many terms where it is confusing and or increase decrease equal to so those terms you need to practice again and again to remember it and i believe if you practice it continuously then 100% you can crack this exam many thanks for watching the video thanks for your time have a good day